Jose Bautista, how you doing, man? From my Toronto Blue Jays. They call me Canadian Mike on Fox Sports Radio. I interviewed you last year when you were in Anaheim in May. I think you had 14 home runs. And ever since then, I've been the loudest and proudest Jose Bautista supporter south of the border here on the air. So it's great to finally talk to you again. Explain to me, why have you become such a good player? The right situation at the right time. I came to a team that was willing to give me an opportunity, and uh, I made the changes necessary to my swing, and they gave me the confidence of going out there every day and not worrying about the immediate results because they, they felt confident enough in my abilities that in the long run it was going to work out. So I changed my swing. I went out there, and I struggled for about a year, but then uh, everything started picking up in September of 2009, and I haven't looked back since. Have you looked at your stats this year compared to where they were last year? Definitely. Uh, it's way different. Does it blow your mind? Yes, it does, but uh, I've had more patience. Even after the second half of last year, everything has improved because I'm swinging at most, more strikes and letting go of the balls. Keep getting myself in good hitting counts. My walks are up. My batting average has gone up because of that, and uh, I keep hitting the ball out of the park, so hopefully I can remain consistent. Jose Bautista, the Toronto Blue Jays. Dwayne Murphy said that you couldn't hit the inside pitch when he got you. And then he helped me hit it. He taught me how to pull the ball the right way and how to be ready on time. You know, the ball was beating me in the strike zone. I kept uh, being laid on the ball and following everything back into the right side. Now I can attack the ball out in front before it gets too deep, and I'm making solid contact consistently. So is it true that in Pittsburgh the coaches were saying, you're late, you're late, and when you got to Toronto with Cito Gaston and, and Dwayne Murphy, they said, just start early. Is it as simple as that? And then constantly working at it? It's simple, and it is at the same time. It's kind of difficult to explain. You know, it, it was a different... Uh, hitting approach and philosophy in Pittsburgh, you know, they wanted me to go the other way and go to, to right field. That in my subconscious made me start later. And at the same time, they were telling me to get ready uh, earlier, which caused a conflict, you know, and I didn't really know how to deal with it. But coming to, to Cito, coming to Dwayne, they just told me to hit the ball hard and look for one pitch and get ready early. And wherever the ball ends up, who cares? I suppose to having to hit the ball to right field. So. It worked out for me. I feel comfortable with it, but I'm having great results, so I have nothing to complain about. Now, you're from the Dominican. There was a lot of great Blue Jays that came from the Dominican. Who was your favorite Dominican Blue Jay when you were growing up? I have two favorites, uh, Tony Fernandez and George Bell. Tony Fernandez was uh, the guy that I looked up to the most. I wanted to be a fast shortstop in the big leagues if I ever were to make it, so I looked up to him. Then George Bell came a little later, uh, and he was hitting the home runs, so who doesn't like the home runs? George Bell was my first favorite baseball player. And in 1987, he wouldn't talk to the New York media because he felt they had cost him the MVP award the previous season. I want you to know that that's not going to happen this year because I'm going to make sure, that provided you continue to, to do what you do at the plate, that you win the MVP award. Well, that would be nice if you can start that campaign for me right now. I would I, greatly I, appreciate it. I'm going to start the campaign. I'm going to lead the campaign on Twitter. And it's the, the people in New England, in the Boston area, that are trying to push Adrian Gonzalez. And I say, no, no, if, if Bautista had that lineup, which he'll have in a couple of years in Toronto, he'd be unbelievable. Well, I'm glad that people like you uh, see that in perspective. And, uh, but I have a great team as well. Uh, we're going to pick it up in the second half. We're going to remain healthy, and everybody's going to get on the same page, and we're going to roll together. So hopefully I can get even to, to catch, catch uh, Adrian in some of these categories that I'm a little bit behind. A couple of weeks ago, when you Philadelphia, Canada today, great atmosphere in the Scott at Rogers Center. Pitch it through kind of high above your head. Next step back, you went yard. And you, you know, flung the bat away. And I just noticed that you did that last year against Yankee Stadium. Is it because of the home run prowess that you've had? You think a lot of people are just trying to put you a little inside, trying to get you a walk off the plate a little bit? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's part of the game. Pitchers got to pitch in different parts of the, uh, the plate wherever they feel comfortable or wherever they feel they can get you out. If they feel like if they brush me back and then they can go outside and they get me out, they're allowed to do that. They're entitled to do that, and that's part of the game, and I, I understand that. But at the same time, I'm very competitive, so I, uh, that just gets my blood flowing. And when I get excited, if I can make something happen and the game is closed and it's late, you know, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but I do have that little swagger and that little uh, flair in, in me. And when I play with my emotions, like I do all the time, and I, I'm going hard, you know, I, sometimes that, that comes out in a little bit of, of swagger. So, uh, again, I don't mean disrespect, but that's just how I play the game. Canadian Mike here with Jose Bautista. You signed a long-term deal with the Blue Jays in the offseason. What is it about the city of Toronto that you love? I love everything about Toronto, except for the, the cold. Uh, when Unfortunately, I, when I, you don't have to worry about that too much exactly. during the season. I will go, go back home to the Dominican in the offseason. But ever since I got there, I was welcomed in a very nice way. Uh, I felt like everybody was warm. There's, uh, it's a really young and diverse city. 
something that I really like. You know, people understand people from different cultures, and you have a lot of different food to eat, a lot of different types of entertainment. Burrito Boys. Burrito Boys is my place. Um, there's a lot of things to do, a lot of places to see. You have a lot of, you have the falls, you got the CN Tower, and it's young, clean, hip. I mean, a world what's not class to love about city, Toronto? exactly. What's not to love about Toronto? Roberto Alomar's going into the Hall of Fame in a couple of weeks. One of the great Latin, Latin players that I always looked up to. He played a great second base for the Blue Jays, and he hit a, a couple of home runs in that World Series and in the playoffs. Uh, Gold Glover, great role model. Somebody I looked up to and somebody that I see all the time in, in Toronto and I enjoy my time when I spend it with him. Final question for you, who's the best tweeter on the Toronto Blue Jays? There's a bunch of you that are updating your pages every day. Who's the best? I think the best is uh, Travis Snyder. He's got a pretty good theme going with the food and uh, he's pretty funny. So uh, if I had to hand out uh, an SP award to the best tweeter in the Blue Jays, it would be to him. Jose, continue to make Toronto proud, man. I'll be your campaign uh, manager down here for the MVP award. I'm going to send you a tweet from Canadian Mike and just know that you've got a lot of support down here as well, man. All right, thanks so much, and follow me at JoeyBats19. JoeyBats19. Thank you, Jose.